All right. We're going to go through the DCS retribution settings as they are in beta 851 as of the end of January 2024. So when you create a new campaign, you end up getting to some settings. I highly recommend you start with Battle for Georgia. Any WRL campaign is made by me for the Rerun Liberation Group. That's just what our name was back in the day. We've been doing this for over two years. Click the website if you want to join us for some PVE uh, content. Our Discord is linked there as well. In this first page here, uh, the default factions set up by the mission planner are going to be selected first. But if you want to modify what aircraft are available, you can do that. Uh, you can also change what kind of frontline vehicles there are. Let's say a certain faction has a, a nasty SAM site that you don't want to go up against. Uh, you can always uncheck that as well. In my case, these custom task forces that I built, the frontline units only have AAA. They don't have SAM sites. So you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to go next. This is also set up by the uh, campaign designer. You can uh, turn on uh, mod settings if you like. Uh, you can change a couple different things here. But personally, if the, you don't really know what you're doing, then leave it alone. Uh, the squadron start at full capacity probably is the only one that isn't obvious. What that does is it makes uh, whatever the mission designer set for the squadron limit, be it 12 aircraft or 16 aircraft or 25 aircraft, it will make it so the enemy automatically starts with that. Same thing with you, with the friendly. You will automatically start at full capacity, which sounds cool, except not all airfields can handle full capacity. So I would leave that off unless you know what you're doing. And here's the bread and butter. the settings page once you get this set up the way you want you can save it we're going to go ahead and go through it all we're going to set it up like i set it up for my group so difficulty settings um you got the uh, ai skill level i would highly suggest turning this one down to average because the ai um, automatically have the best aim ever um, the AAA for your helicopter guys, even on average, is going to be ridiculously accurate. So turn it to average. Uh, the income multiplayer and enemy income multiplier, that's set by the mission designer, but obviously higher income, more money to spend on units. Uh, player pilots can't be killed. Every squadron has pilots in it, and if that pilot dies, it's dead for good, and it takes a turn to get new pilots back. And since players tend to die a lot and like to respawn, we leave that checked so they don't waste the pilot. That way you can you know, use those pilots as AI instead of dead players. Man pads on front lines. If you're a masochist, go ahead and leave that on. Day-night missions. I always make it do day missions only, and that's because I edit the time in the mission editor before I host it. In-game labels. I prefer neutral dot. It is a nice compromise for those people that are in VR or have uh, eyesight problems. Uh, that'll make it so they can have a little bit of a black dot that they can see over aircraft and ground units. Map visibility. Fog of War is a great option uh, for beginners, uh, but we do allies only. That means you can't see any enemies on the F-10 map, only blue. Easy comms. I don't like people using easy comms. We have SRS frequencies. We have specific, um, you know, frequencies for the tankers and all that. So I enforce that off. And battle damage assessment, that's the window that pops up and gives you red text saying you killed stuff. Then we'll go to campaign management. Restrict weapons by date. At the beginning of a campaign or at the mission de designer's request, it can... Uh, you know, if you said 1985 or 1960 and you click this, it's going to do its best to restrict certain weapons and override all the AI uh, default loadouts. Uh, prefer squadrons of mass matching primary task. Um, I leave this off. I let the AI be flexible uh, in how it plans flights. Um, 
all it's saying is that, hey, a cast flight is a cast flight first. Uh, air to air is an air to air first. And it's going to, it's not going to prioritize uh, the quickness to target. So I just leave that off. AI pilot leveling, uh, that allows them to rank up from different skill levels. I don't want them to get any better. Um, enable purse squadron pilot limits. This is one of the best ways to limit how much enemy air that they can put up. So I always leave it on. Maximum number of pilots per squadron. This is also set by the mission designer, um, but it's defaulted to 16. And just leave it. Don't mess with it. Unless you want less pilots, like let's say you wanted the AI to only have 12 at a, 12 in a squadron at a time. Uh, that would mean like a uh, squadron of MiG-21s could only have 12 pilots at a time. They could buy 24 planes, but they can only put 12 up. Um, squadron pilot replenishment rate. This means as the pilots get killed every turn, you get four back. That's usually a good number. Enable per squadron aircraft limits. This is also set by the mission designer. You can also edit in another menu later on. Uh, I do leave this on as well. It's kind of the same as the pilots. It just limits the enemy to how much they can purchase and how much they can put up in the air. Automation. If you want automation, look at my last tutorial video. It explained how all these options work. I don't like automation, so I leave it off. I don't want the automation to plan player slots. Uh, I don't really care if the AI plans AWACS or um, tankers. They can do that. Uh, automatically generate packages where players are scheduled ASAP. That means the players don't have to wait to fly. All of these settings are self-explained, and they are great by default. Same thing with this uh, flight planner automation. This just changes how often there's a two-ship, three-ship, or four-ship. By default, it's perfect. Campaign doctrine. Um, if you don't want the auto planner making refueling flights, um, you can uncheck all these. Um, I leave it. There's no reason for me to turn it off. Um, if you want the enemy to attack or the AI to plan runway attacks or aircraft attacks, this is what this setting is saying. It needs to be a minimum of 20 planes before it's going to plan an attack. I usually drop that down a little bit because I want more strikes op for aggressiveness this is a must 100 percent that that means they are going to plan riskier strikes and it's going to be way more active in the ao these uh, helicopter settings are uh, self-explanatory and all of these change the way ai plans flights the ones that i like to change is i like my uh, tankers to actually matter so i don't mind putting them in a risky position uh, I might drop these down a little bit, and you can experiment with this. But a tanker behind your airbase, why would you fly further to the tanker when the airbase is right there? So I always drop that down. Mission generation, uh, this fast forward to mission first contact and interrupt fast forward. That's also in my previous video. What it does is it skips to where the aircraft will, you know, taxi and take off virtually. And whenever they would be in contact with enemy air, that's when the mission stops. So if your mission is starting at 1500, with fast forward to first contact, it may start at 1515, 1520 on average. Um, this interrupt fast forward, so if you're a player flight and you do never, you might be in an air start aircraft. You might be flying already. So if you want a cold start aircraft, you do startup time. If you want a hot start aircraft, you do taxi time. And if you want to be on the runway, you do takeoff time. But if you do the runway one, you may be interfering with airport operations, and it's probably not a good idea. So if you want to skip this takeoff, you do a taxi time. But this setting relies on this setting, so these ones don't matter for me because I don't use them. Auto resolve combat during fast forward. Don't do this. It's experimental, and a lot of aircraft losses are going to happen. Uh, Supercarrier module, well, I always use supercarrier. Objective markers on the map, those F10 orange circles. So if you have allies only where you can only see allies, these F10 orange circles will be on the enemy positions and you can use those to get coordinates if you need them. 
dark knee board. Players ignore TOT and spawn immediately. This is perfect. Once again, players can get in their cockpit and do whatever they want. They don't have to wait in spectator until the time. Convert untest op four and aircraft slots. This is kind of cool if you want players to be op four. Auto swap at FLIR to lightning. So carrier get light at FLIR, land get lightning. I love it. Default start type for AI aircraft. Just leave it as cold. The only other thing I would do is in flight, but I do that manually anyway. This mission desired duration, uh, this is the most important, 30 minutes. You drop it down to 30 minutes and your mission time starts at 1500. All of the AI are going to finish their flights or time on targets by 1600. So an hour of flying. It's a perfect amount of time. So leave that and then tanker on time is, uh, well, that's self-explanatory. The front line length or width, this is set by the mission planner. Uh, smaller front lines are better. By default, I think it's 80, but I always play with 30 or less. It crams down the front lines, more action, more easy to do some casts. Uh, these are just for the observer slots. So, you know, I usually put three of each. Uh, these are all self-explanatory. Um, this one's new. AI flights have unlimited fuel. It's uh, not just straight up unlimited fuel, but, you know, if you play Retribution before, you'll see the AI trying to land at all kinds of random air bases because they ran out of fuel because they're stupid. Now, performance. This is a lot to take in here. This is the bread and butter of everything. The smoke effect front line has smoke plumes to help you uh, distinguish where it's at. Sam start in alert mode. Artillery strikes. I don't want artillery strikes. That whether it causes performance issues or not, it does nothing for me in my game that I care about. Uh, my missions, I don't have scud sites because scud sites fucking, excuse my language, uh, kill the frames. Uh, so I uncheck that. Moving ground units. It's fun if you have a lot of guys that are going to do casts, but if you really don't, there's no point in having them move. Just save yourself some time. Convoys drive full distance between control points, factory to factory, factory to front line or factory to base. So I always uncheck that, but I also disable convoys and I disable shipping convoys. For me, I don't care to go hunt down a column of vehicles and half the time the AI screws up anyway, so why? Frontline troops prefer roads. If you do have moving ground units, they prefer roads if this is checked. Um, the mission designer does create the frontline supply, but you can overwrite it with this. Depends how much uh, frontline units you want. Infantry squads alongside vehicles and carcasses in previous turns I shut off. I also disable the untasked aircraft. This means the static planes that aren't being flown won't spawn on the air bases and cause performance issues. Calling. Well, calling is interesting uh, because it lets you uh, despawn stuff. So we're going to turn this on and get back to that. Hopefully I'll remember at the end here. And we'll uh, we'll put this down to 25 just for testing purposes. And then this one is cool. If you make a manual flight that starts in the air, it'll RTB and disappear in the air. This is definitely needed and awesome. Cheat menu. It's always good to have the cheats on. Um, you can mess with stuff later. Um, Skynet is not good if you're only playing with AI teammates. The AI doesn't know how to deal with Skynet that turns off its radars. Okay, so I would turn that off if you're a solo player. I turn it on if you're playing with buddies and just make sure that you don't send the AI in to kill SAM sites that they just won't understand. Splash damage is definitely needed. Uh, this EW Jammer one, this is the make it so you could play like a F-18 Growler. Um, EWRS, it's used on a lot of online servers. It, it pops up with the top five aircraft and their distances from you. Um, and then the rest of these are self-explanatory. Then in the Lua plugin options, all of this is pretty self-explanatory. The main thing that I change is I scroll down here to the bottom. I do wave explosions. If that's for splash damage. Damage model means if a, something gets wounded enough, it'll not be able to use its weapons. 
cluster munitions, and then ship radar damaged by anti-radiation. And these are all values that you can mess with, but I'll leave it as is. So there you go. And then you just hit save, and we're going to call it test. And then if we, we made a new campaign, we could just load that right in. We don't have to sit through one by one. So we're going to hit next. We're going to hit finish. And here you can change everything. Look, it tells you how much parking, how many that will fit. Um, it tells you the max size. All of this is set by the mission designer, but you can change it. Let's say, uh, you know, you want more than eight K-50s to be able to purchase, or you want more B-52s, or you want more Lancers, and that's how you handle that. You could change the airbase. You can remove. You can add squadron, and you can also save and load these configs. So let's say you love my config here. You could save it and load it in a different campaign, and you could change blue and red. You can also change their mission types. You can change their skins, their primary task, everything. So we'll just accept that as is, and then we're going to show the calling real quick. Um, in here is the calling exclusion zones. This means everything outside of these circles will not spawn when you load the mission. So as you can see, all of this won't spawn. The airfields will still function, the aircraft will still take off, but none of that will spawn in. So technically you could cheat and go bomb the enemy runway if you wanted, but that's not, that's not the purpose. So what you want to do is you want to find the nice sweet zone of what works best for you. Personally, our server is strong enough we don't need calling. But you can see how it changes. And by default, it's at 100. So that's pretty good. And this settings button is right here, so you can go back in and change. So pretty much what you do is you just, you're like, okay, you're not allowed to go past Gudata or Sochi because their, their SAM sites won't spawn. That's how you save on performance. Other than that, that's all I had for this video is just going through those settings options and hopefully getting you uh, more familiar with those. So uh, best of luck to you and your games. Uh, feel free to join us at WeRunLiberation.com. Find our Discord. Very 